host of Craft Roulette. This is number 121, and it's uh, going to be a gym dandy. So stick around. Craft Roulette is the ultimate paper crafting card making game show challenge, and we're here every Friday evening at 6.30 Central Time, and you're, we always save a place for you. So join us. We'd love to have you. Okay. Um, sad news first. I'm just going to get it out of the way. I got my start card flag here. If I don't cry, it'll be a miracle. Uh, Jackie Rip, one of our leading ladies, passed on last week. Uh, I think it was a really bad idea for all of us, but apparently it was her her time and um, she, she was ready. Um, do want to thank everybody for all your kind comments, your supportive and encouraging comments on our Facebook group. It meant a lot to me and I'm going to type them up and send them over to Janet you don't know about this so that you can give it to her niece Um, she was a leading lady from episode number 11 to I think um, to 115 and then all of a sudden she got quiet and we didn't know why but um, she was she was busy doing her own thing she was a huge glitter fairy in our group and you all got some encouragement from her I betcha so um, we're not going to do anything like put anything special on the wheel or um, make any, I don't have any big plans right now. But um, if you do have a friend that you haven't heard from in a while, it might be a good time to reach out and just say hi. Send them a card and tell them you're thinking about them. And I'm done. Okay. Sue Maysner, happy birthday. I'm hoping you had a great day. Thank you for all the love on Facebook for her, too. That was awesome. Um, we do have some wonderful spin sponsors this month. I'm even bubbling. My mouth is bubbling. Um, we do have some wonderful spin sponsors. We have a cherry on top, and you guys gave them such good reviews on the Facebook group. Thank you so much for letting me know, because I've never gotten to know them very well yet so i'm excited about that and trinity stamps which we all are loving i i made some great cards with one little die i thought they were great (laughs) well that's kind of snotty isn't it but anyway we do want to thank trinity stamps and a cherry on top for donating a 25 dollars gift certificate each month each week this month in july to and to be eligible to win one of those gift certificates all you have to do is submit a card based on the parameters that we get just easy peasy it is so easy we also have an extra bonus tonight from Jeannie Lou who is going to be giving a goodie bag away to someone who sent in a card last week so we're looking forward to seeing who gets that if you send in a card make sure you stick around and if you can't stick around at least come back to the very end of the show and watch and see if you won because you need to contact me at at that point and let me know Um, we do have merchandise because we want you to be well-dressed like Mr. Mike wearing his beautiful sleeve from the house of Detizio. And, um, it is, it's fun to wear. And I see it oftentimes on our, our guest crafters. And also when we have all Zoom, our Zoom calls with our patrons because we are community supported. How'd you like that segue? And we are community supported and we have a Patreon group that you are welcome to investigate and see if it's something for you to help us support, be supported. Um, because we're not paid by these spin sponsors. We just get stuff to give you guys. <laughs> so um, we would be love to have you as a part of our Patreon. We do have a lot of bonus content. I give you so much stuff. A lot of stuff. Okay, that's enough. But anyway, I do see the uh, Craft Roulette shirts on on our Zoom calls, and it's really fun. It's just exciting to see them in different colors mm, all over the world. So I think, is there anything else I need to say? Then let's get to the show, shall we? From Austin, Texas, I am delighted to welcome Lydia Fiedler from Understand Blue. Hi, everybody. Hopefully you can they hear love me. you already. <laughs> <laughs> I was keeping up with the chat, but now I'm on here, so it's been right. fun talking to all y'all in the chat. Right. It's kind of it's kind of like I read the chat tomorrow, and then right. we have Mr. Producer over there. He's reading the chat, so if there's something that we need to know about, he will let us know. So it's really kind of a luxury. 
But welcome to Craft Roulette, Lydia. We're so glad to have you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I can't wait. (laughs) I asked her if she was nervous before. She said no. She's just excited. So I'm that's too old good. to get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing well, scares thank, me anymore. <laughs> I know. You get a little inert. Um, <laughs> I do want to thank Daniel West for suggesting Lydia because I didn't really know about you. So can, what do I need to know? Well, I have worked in the stamping industry forever. I won't say how long because I am really old, but... Um, <laughs> I, since the late 1900s, I'll put it that way. And (laughs) that really uh, sounds old. (laughs) (laughs) I work for, as the community manager of splitcoaststampers.com. That's one of the reasons I was so excited to be here is because we're all about challenges too. And I think that that's where I get my creative mojo from is Mm -hmm. challenges. So this was great. So I manage the community over there and um, I also do some freelance work for some other crafty companies, but I've, I've been in this industry forever. What's your favorite trend that you've ever seen? Do you suppose? You know, the thing that changed crafting the most personally for me as an old stamper (laughs) is personal die cutting. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it was like there was the before times and then there was, because we used to go to stamp and scrapbook stores and pay by the minute That's true. to use these huge die cutting machines. And so yeah. I remember very vividly when personal die cutting came in and I, I would have to say it's still my favorite yeah. um, of all the, the trends, I guess, yeah. is just being able to use dies at home is so liberating. Scan and cut, have you dabbled? Have you gone over? I have. And because I've always been a person in technology, like my whole career, I've, I've written software, I've worked for software companies, I've done all that kind of thing. And I don't like to combine my computer with crafting. So I do have a scan and cut. It's a fabulous machine. And when I was teaching in-person classes, it really helped for doing multiples and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's not my happy place. My happy place is my hands and my tools that I can use on my desk. Gotcha. Gotcha. Before I forget, I want to hear about your how you first met embossing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. D- disclaimer. Please don't try this at home. That's As right. I said, we I'm do really, not we do not it, say it's a good idea here at Crabby yeah, Lip. <laughs> not a good idea. But like I said, I'm old. And so when I was a very young teenager, my mother and I went to at that time they were really hobby stores. They weren't stamp stores. They had all a little bit of everything. And I had already had some stamps, but this was when embossing powder was new. So new that there was no such thing as a heat gun. So we got the embossing ink and we got the embossing powder and we went home and the very first cards I ever embossed were embossed over the burner on our gas stovetop. No lie. I made all of our Christmas cards that year, holding them over an open flame on the stove. Please don't try this at home. (laughs) Did you get a (laughs) nice distressed look, kind of that burnt edge look or anything? Yes, some of them Tim Holtz would have left. Yes. (laughs) You know, I wonder, you know, you can start a grass fire with a magnifying glass. Do not try this either. But I wonder if you could melt embossing powder in a time of... Oh, you could try. I'm going to try it tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. I live in the perfect place for that. Let's do it. I think I'm going to try it. Yeah, because, you know, what it. if you didn't have electricity or the gas right. was out and you needed to emboss? And right. it was summer. If, yeah. We, I mean, our grid doesn't work in Texas. What if, what if my power goes out? I'm going to get my magnifying glass and I'm going to try Always that. Always keep, keep it handy. Let Report back to us and I'll try to yeah. do it too. I will. Oh, Judy did it over a light bulb. Oh, light bulb is a much better idea. <laughs> Probably a little safer. How many wattages does it take? I don't know. We I really love that story. I did. I thought that, that was a grand story. And it does take you back so far. It does. Because it, you, really, you were just a babe in arms almost. And um, 
It's fun that you had a mom that was uh, crafty too. My mom's very crafty. Like I, my, there are a lot of crafters and artistic type people in my family. And I think that that's like the best gift that you can give your child. I'm certainly very grateful for all mm -hmm. that time that she spent crafting with us and showing me how to make things, showing me how to cook. Like it's, it's the thing in my life that I love the most and that I'm very mm -hmm. glad she gave me. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. I hope she watches that part of the show. Yeah, she will. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, have you played along with this yet? Or I have not played along yet. Ooh, I've only watched. Going to, ooh, this is going to be exciting. You're going to do fine. I know. I'm, We're going to talk I know. it through. We're going to get everything figured out and it'll be in the wheel. Who knows what he's got up his sleeve. Who knows? He throws the craziest things out and then it works out just beautifully. Last week looked great. Last week did look great. You guys did great. So do you remember um, what I asked you that your line was going to be? Because <laughs> I forgot before the show to remind no. you. I what is zero craft memory roulette? of that. What, what is craft roulette? What is craft roulette? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> what is craft roulette? Craft Roulette is a live paper crafts challenge show where the goal is to complete a project that has been randomly selected by the spin of a wheel. There are four categories we spin for, project, colors, element, and random. Each category has 24 possible options with a combined possibility of 331,776 unique projects. Whoa. We're live every Friday at 6.30 p.m. Central on YouTube.com slash Craft Roulette. Please like and subscribe. Each week we bring on a special guest crafter to create along with us and share their unique take on the challenge. You can play too. Complete a unique project of your own using the same four parameters set in this episode. You'll have 48 hours to contribute by submitting pictures of your project through the submission form on craftroulette.live. Contributions are featured on marygunfun.com's weekly episode blog and the next episode. Let's recap last week's episode and submissions. I forgot. There are some more things I forgot to tell her again. We had uh, we always have a tech call for new um, crafters early on in the week when we talked about it. But you know, there I've slept. Lydia slept. We all kind of forget things, and so um, I was kind of catching up. Anyway, that is what Craft Roulette is, and we're live every Friday night, six thirty Central Daylight Time. And we would love to have you join us and join us on the contributor board too, because it's. Um, it's a great, it's a great inspiration for everybody. So what we're going to do now, we had the slideshow before. If you came in at 630, you missed it. But um, we do now have the contributor slideshow at 610 um, as a part of our tailgate party. So make sure you make a note of that for next week. And this now we're just going to talk about our achievement board today or this week, our achievements basically are because we just like to celebrate and um, so there are several things that we like that we have categorized into celebration milestones and that is one the first time con contributors two the zero heroes and that just means you have sent in enough cards that you have a zero in your ones place um, three the leading ladies the top five contributors for the week you won't believe those numbers if you're new here and Four. Is that four? Five, three, four, five, four. The Club 52, which has no perks, no dues, no cards, no meetings, nothing. You don't get anything except that you know that you're a new to Club 52 member. So let's look at the achievement board, shall we? That was my card. That's an achievement right there. Oh, the parameters. The parameters were congratulations card, which 
You guys did really great. Some were hooray, some were congrats, some were congratulations. Had all sorts of things that you congratulated people for. There was vegetable garden for colors, which we decided was pretty much everything. Uh, for element, you had to have in, something about in the garden. Um, we had all sorts of gardens, too. <laughs> we had... We had um, flower gardens, vegetable gardens, bunnies in the gardens, boots in the gardens, um, all sorts of good stuff. And then you had to throw in a random element of hand drawing something, which I thought you guys might be a little afraid, but you didn't. You were brave and you did great jobs. Some of them were little stitches, some of them were the whole card. So do go to the gallery over on craftroulette.live and enjoy it. It's great. Okay, Jeannie Lou was our guest crafter, and she made this card. It is so bright and fun. I really liked it a lot. And now, this is on a timer. First timers, we'd like to welcome Alicia. And Julia. I'm glad I don't have to say your last name. Our zero heroes include Bridget R, her 10th. Well done. Cheryl Jackson, her 10th. Janet Sitaway, another, another tenor. Max had his 10th. Cool. Sue Kramer had her 10th. A lot of 10 spots there. Well done, you guys. Amy had her 30th. How about that? Mary Brindley had her 30th also. Consecutive. Yeah, hasn't missed a week. Remarkable. Melissa has her 30th and she had a bad sprain. So pretty. Cordelia had her 40th consecutive. Unbelievable. Lisa Welpley had her 40th. Super fun. Stacy had her 40th. <laughs> Teresa had her 60th. Wow, 60. That's half the show. She is... <laughs> Feline had her 70th. Outstanding. Vicki Ruta had her 80th. And this one's going to be featured in a car or a magazine in the UK. Well done. Smurf had her 81st. She was a leading lady. She is tied with... Jackie Muller from South Australia with 81 each. In number four place, we have Kathy Herring from Wisconsin. 85. 5K Lamont has sent in 87. And I think it's consecutively. I forgot to say that. Ellen Card Monkey Jarvis has sent in 98 consecutive cards. And Patty Beck, our leader, with 115 consecutive cards. She hasn't missed a week. Since episode 5, Lena Marie had, is now a member of Club 52. Well done. Congrats to all of our achievers. You guys make the show. Every week I just look and go, they did it again. They did it again. As Patty Beck says, week after week after week. Got to tell you a Jackie, a Jackie Rip story real fast. And Patty Beck. So Jackie Rip was number two, right behind Patty. I mean, pretty darn close, like nine behind her or something like that. And six, six behind her. And Patty Beck was sick one week. And uh, so she didn't get her card in. And I, on Monday morning, it was before we had extended submissions. And it was on Monday morning, I wrote on the Facebook group, sad news. 
or something very generic like that. Jackie rip, ripped into me and said, you've got to give Patty more time. <laughs> and she led a relatively angry mob just to make sure that Patty Beck had more time so that she could get her um, consecutive card in. So she was just, uh, she was a force to be reckoned with. And, but not for her own game, but for her friends. So that was the kind of woman she was. I will be leaving her church address in the Facebook group after the show so that you can send a card if you would like. Anyway, I forgot to say that. All right. That was great, wasn't it? I love, I love your achievements and I love celebrating them. Thank you for being a part of our show. All righty. Are you ready, Lydia? Is ready. She's going to be. She's coming back. There she is. Fun <laughs> stuff, huh? Do you like it's to celebrate so like Arbor Day and anything that comes up Donut Day? Right. Yeah. Squirrel Day. Squirrel Day. <laughs> what do you do on Squirrel Day? You go out and feed the squirrels. <laughs> Mr. Producer didn't miss a beat. He said, you go nuts. <laughs> I well, love it. This is when we start getting when the rubber hits the road, the rubber hits the wood, the st stamp hits the ink. I don't know, but this is the time that we start talking about parameters. Dang. Are you yeah. Have you looked at the wheel lately? Do you have some mm -hmm. ideas on what you hope to get? I do. I have some ideas. I well, love critters. Let's I'm bring on that parameter that board got... so we can see. And then we'll see what, you, what you're what you looking at. There they I'm are. Jeannie got okay. all the garden stuff. <laughs> yeah, they're gone. So you want, you'd like critters. What's your favorite kind mm -hmm. of project? Probably watercolor is my favorite. That's like my go-to mm -hmm. is watercolor painting. Um, mm hmm I love anything with a critter on it. I love all botanicals. Okay. Um, I'm kind of a clean and simple girl, so I'm a little scared of some of the foldy things on the board. <laughs> We're going to talk through uh, all. But, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, all right. nobody gets hurt. It's going to be fine. <laughs> No, there won't be any blood, we hope. So, <laughs> haven't, haven't had any blood. I do have a band-aid somewhere, but I can't help you if you need that. Um, DNA on a card has not ever been on the parameter, so um, I don't think... I, I do like true crime, that. though, so I'm okay Well, true crime for the parameters could be pretty interesting, yeah. but I don't know. If, true crime. <laughs> it would be a true crime to have true crime on the parameters. Um, we are going to be spinning for project, getting some colors in line, elements, and random. We're going to talk about each one of those, too, after we get the spins done. So that don't panic if you find if we spin something and you go, <laughs> I can't do that. We're going to talk it through, and we're going to make sure that we have some great ideas. This is where the chatterbox comes in. They are okay. really helpful. And um, because sometimes when I'm sitting on this chair, I can't think. I just, <laughs> I'm just spinning, and I can't think. But anyway, it's okay. Um, so, vetoes. Vetoes, since we are a community-sponsored program, um, we do offer our patrons little special perks. And one of those things is they get to veto a color set, an element, and a random each week. Now, when we veto something, it doesn't mean that you can't use it. So don't cry if you hear your favorite thing vetoed. It just means that the wheel can't make us do it. For, for instance, say... An envelope is vetoed. You can still use an envelope even if you had fruit as a parameter that was chosen. As long as you think you can put that envelope in that fruit or whatever, <laughs> or the fruit in the envelope or whichever works first. Cart before horse, horse before cart, and um, vice versa, things like that. But we're going to talk about all those. We're going to give Mr. Wheel. Oh. oh, I've got to tell you what the vetoes are. Anytime you want to learn how to do the show, Mary, again, you just let me know. Uh, color, they decided um, baby colors. They hate baby colors. For element, they decided film. And I did ask everybody on the patron group if they knew why 
what was in common about these veto choices. I'll tell you in just a second. And random, they didn't want Polaroid. Which I'm not sure where that is. There it is. 20. Polaroid frame. Uh-huh. You gave, I gave you choices that had all been vetoed before. <laughs> so I wanted to see if you really didn't like them. And you really don't like those. <laughs> so anyway, yep, they had all been on my list on the spreadsheet in red, which means that you had vetoed them. So now is your chance. Lydia Fiedler. Would you like to veto something? Is there something that just would ruin your day if we got? Maybe one of those fancy folds. A fancy fold. Which, what do we have there? Is there one that stands out for you that just looks... If there is uh, Fancy Fold, would you just like that one? Fancy Fold under Project. Yep, would you like that one? I would like to veto that. <laughs> All right, it is vetoed. Here we go. For a warm-up, let's see what we've got. You know, that's fine. Nothing, no shame in vetoing. Four project. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Not everybody likes fancy folds. That's for sure. 18. Book binding card. Don't panic. I, I have answers. Colors. And I only know some of the answers because you're all creative. Any three colors. Oh, that's pretty exciting. Element. Numero uno. Houses. Something to do with houses. And random. Hmm. 16. A small scene. Oh, well, that sounds like it might have some possibilities. Okay. Ooh, Mr. Wheel, don't fall down. We are going to talk about each and every one of these. Um, our show is all about creative expression. So this is an art project for you all, and we're not going to be very judgy. Um, it's going to be whatever you come up with, as long as you can tell us why you chose it. Pretty much. We're going to talk about each and every one of them. but And I'm going to go project, element, colors, small scene. Because that's how I work. I go, okay, I've got my project. I know what I'm going to do. I know what I have to do on the basics. Element is how I usually go at a, after a project. I want to go the element next because I got to think how am I going to use a house or whatever then I bring in the colors and the random um, so book binding card you made a little bit of a face I was a little scared that's fear really? crept in for a moment I didn't know what that meant that's that's okay um, there are multiple ways to decide to think about this here's one you can think of it as like if you went to Google and you said, hey, Google, what's a bookbinding card? They would come back with this kind of talk. There we go. They would come back with a card that has this little portion glued down. And then it opens up oh, gotcha. with the, just a little portion glued down. You could do it with any size, any, any way like that. You can do it like this or this. That's the literal, literal Google search way. <laughs> but there are other ways to think of book binding cards. I think of having a shelf with books, <laughs> the bindings of books on them, or even a book with some anything on a, a binding. <laughs> so... Um, you could make your card look like a book. You could do some cool faux leather kind of things and some gold embossing over the gas flame. Um, <laughs> you, <laughs> you could do all sorts of things like that. What, what comes to your mind, your fertile, crafty mind? Well, what's so funny is that was a past career of mine. I was a rare book 
preservation technician in Rochester, New York. <laughs> so I don't know why I'm, but what I, what I like to do is make little journals. And so the first thing that comes into my mind is the journal. So it could be That's like cool. a journaling card or, uh-huh. um, you know, something that represents art journaling or something like that. But I do love that first idea that you showed me. I've never made a mm-hmm. card like that. So I'm kind of excited They're uber about that. easy. They're uber easy. But you yeah, could make cute. you could make that into anything too. It yeah, could be also the, like the big picture of tape. it, or just a part of it. I'm sorry. Yeah, washi tape. Tape is something that's used in bookbinding a lot. Fabric. There, are, I Fabric. think there are all kinds of possibilities for that. I'm not yeah. as scared now. Nobody needs to hold me. <laughs> but. When you said vintage books, I thought of a linen cover mm-hmm. because Absolutely. I'm reading an old book. Um, because of Daniel, but I'm re- rereading an old book, Love is Eternal by Irving Stone. And it's going to take me a long time to read it because I only read a couple pages at a time because it's so pretty. It's written so well that I, I read it very slowly to enjoy mm-hmm. it. But it has a linen-like cover on it. And I looked on Amazon to see how much that thing was worth. It was worth $98. <laughs> and like, oh my don't gosh. put your coffee on there. No. So... Yeah, I was shocked, but it has a linen finish, and so that would be something really yeah. good for book binding. But you could make it into a card. <laughs> you, what are you guys saying? Bitty Penny made a book binding video for her junk journal this morning. Do you do junk journals? I love junk journaling. Oh. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. I do it all the time. Cool. So, I think you're going to have fun with this project. Friends, Gloria, or Bitty Penny. <laughs> sorry. Houses. I like the idea of stitching. That's very creative. Stitching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because there's all those three hole binding kind of. Oh, yeah. And and you can make a card and it doesn't have to be very thick and it can have pages. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get too thick for mail or anything. You can actually yeah, like have. like those travelers answers. journals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Except envelope size. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Yes, I like it. I like it. Um, houses. What are you thinking? What do you do? You have a stamp, or do you have a technique to make a house? Or well, you know what I'm thinking is houses mm-hmm. that little animals could live in. So I'm thinking bird nests or squirrel nests or like a little cat bed. Maybe somewhere a cat would be because those are the animals that live in my house. Um, <laughs> Something like that. So I, my mind first went to houses for fairies or houses for animals, anything that you would find kind of outside. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. On a, in relation to Castle a book. is a great idea. And how clever is Mr. Wheel to this week with having a small scene with houses? Yeah. Or a room in a house. I love that idea from Grandma Gay. That's a great idea. A room in a house. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. she's thinking, ooh. Ooh, that's starting to come together in my little ooh. brain. Ooh. I like that. You know, there's those cards that open up into a room, a scene with a little mm-hmm. room, and you could have books on a table inside a little scene of a card. Oh, my gosh. There's nothing that's going to stop this gallery from just exploding into an incredible variety. Oh, I went, I know. I wanted to say something to you all because um, while we were looking at the slideshow and Lydia and Mr. Producer and I were talking, you were saying if you didn't know what the parameters were, you wouldn't know what the parameters were <laughs> when you look yep. at the slideshow because of all the different ways that it is expressed. And I love yeah. that. It, they were so creative. It was unbelievable how people interpreted that and and at first it seems simple you know it seems like a simple theme and then you see all those variations that was impressive y'all are impressive (laughs) yeah I think they're gonna have fun with this one too and um yeah a hole in the wall for a mouse house that's a really cute idea (laughs) and the beehive somebody said beehive I think that's so sweet are you kidding that's a great idea mushroom house Oh, this is going to be hard to narrow down. I thought it was going to be easy. Stop it. 
stop stop talking all the all of you I, I must have peace I'm there's smoke coming out of my ears there's so many ideas it's so it's great so wonderful that's so great um, small scenes works with the house pretty easy to just put it in a situation right whoops what's mr Oh, treehouse is Yes, the, tree, the scene itself on the card could be small, or it could be a scene with small things. Yes. So, who knows? Well, you clean and simple, Stampers. This is your moment. Yes. This is how you do it that. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a slim line with an entire parade. Right. But it it can just... But it can just be part of the whole thing. It can be a, um, it can be included. Obviously, it needs to be included. But it can be just a kind of an afterthought. Oh, this is a little scene. It's a scene on the wall in a picture. Who knows? All lots and lots of options. So it can be something. It can be part of the focal. It can be part of the. Oh, I gotta put something else in there for random. That we do have to have all four of those parameters because Deputy Heidi is in the group and um, she will get us. Any three <laughs> colors also. Okay, so any three colors. Here are some things to think about. Any three colors we're a little bit more um, legalistic about. But it's any, like if you wanted to use a red, it could be any of the shades of red. Um, you could have pinks and dark brick and red red. It can be different shades of red. If you need a th another color, you can always blend them too. So, so you can. So wait, am I limited three. to three colors? You are limited to three, plus okay. neutrals. Gotcha. But you can always blend two of those colors and get another color. So if you need some more color, there are sure. tricks. Yes, there are tricks. But okay. our craft roulette neutrals are black, gray, brown, tan, beige, craft, white, cream, metallics, all of those great colors. Gotcha. Something that look mostly would you'd find in the dirt. So um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, a shiny penny. So that's kind of what we've got to work with. I'm still seeing wonderful ideas. I know. They're so creative. Oh, my goodness. They're off. Always off taking notes. I'm Gen X. I got to write stuff down. <laughs> I have so many <laughs> notebooks. <laughs> Me too. Oh, my God. It's obscene. All right. Well, is there anything else that we need to talk about about these parameters before we run off and get our things? I don't think so. I think I've got it. Okay. All right. I think we're going to... Ideas. All right. I've got lots of ideas. I don't have anything focused, but I've got lots of ideas. So we're at least... Oh, that's a that. requirement? Oh, <laughs> silly me. No, I don't focus. <laughs> the fifth parameter is being focused. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get our our things let us know when you're ready or we'll check in on you in just a few minutes and while we're doing that why don't you enjoy a infomercial from fun university thanks guys do you find crafting hard are you stuck on one of those pesky parameters do you feel like the wheel is watching you while you craft we have the solution for you. Hi, I'm Mary Gunfun. While I'm busy gathering my supplies, I just wanted to tell you about my other YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fun university. We break down the parameters and talk about them at a more in-depth level. We also pick one tricky one to concentrate on and do a deep dive into it. <laughs> but that's not all. We do our mail call every week on the channel as well. So if you wanted to send me a card or a package, send it to this address and I'll share it on the show. We're live almost every Tuesday night on youtube.com slash fun university. We also do some celebration there because we will review our last week's achievement board. 
That's youtube.com F-U-N-N University. No easy or complicated payments. No COD. Just show up and have fun. If you have too much fun, please call a friend immediately and invite them over to have fun with you. Normal postage and handling rates do apply. This ad was not paid for by anybody. We hope Mary is ready because I can't stretch this out any longer. Now back to the show. Oh, and no, I'm back. I'm back. Um, I think I've got some ideas. I'm not sure if they're good ones or not, but we're going to go with it. And in the meantime, a funny thing happened. I poked myself with a pin. I'm just making sure I don't get any DNA on my card. So anyway, whew. <laughs> yes, that is Fun University. We're live every Tuesday night. You think this is... We don't teach here, so we throw something together over there on Tuesday nights. And hopefully you can... There's something that maybe you haven't ever heard before. But, you know, even if you've heard it, sometimes we get to uh, go, Oh, man, you've been crafting a long time. I'd forgotten about all that stuff. So that's what happened the other night. So anyway, I have... I don't have a stamp that I'm going to do the house, but I do. I found this little piece of, uh, you know, I don't want that orientation of cards, so I'll, re I'll redo that. But um, I found a little die cut mat, and I've got three beautiful colors, and I got this for a mat if I want more mats, and some ground or trees. Thank you, Janet Flanagan. Yes, please, if you do feel like you're enjoying your show, the show, please give us a thumbs up. This will be, it would be great. We'd appreciate it. Um, so I think that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to make my little scene right here, and then I'll find a card base. So how big is this thing? Let me cut it down. It's got little stitches on it. So if I make it two by three, we'll start there. You think there's going to be a lot of Christmas cards this time? You know, that would be really good. Christmas cards are great for little scenes. I know who, who will rock it. Christina. She loves a little scene. She's like the little scene queen. You know it. <laughs> she's she's in Sweden. She's always up in the middle of the night watching us. So, okay. Is that about the right size? It's not quite right. Maybe a little better. And her scenes always have Santa Claus. The little scene queen. That's right. And then Ellen, who knows what you'll do. It'll be fun. So do you guys like this? Do you like it? Melissa, you, yep, you're good at little scenes. I think you may have even suggested it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll throw we'll throw glitter at you, Melissa. That at least it may get everywhere, but it won't hurt when it hits. <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use a um just a little gray background there. Do my little thing up there and then have a sentiment up there. Yeah. You know, I cleaned this yesterday. There is a chance I can't find anything. It's actually a pretty good chance. But it's nice. I think it's I think I'm I think I may also make this a square card. Who's me? Okay. Caffeinated craftiness. Would white and black count as colors? They count they can count as colors. Or they can count as just neutrals, which are, free. which are free. So, whichever you like. We're that kind. I think you guys are doing great. Anybody else 
excited and wanting and crafting? Are you making your little ideas or what are you doing? They are fun tonight. I like these parameters. The wheel can really be just an okay kind of guy. You're making a greenhouse. Bitty Penny, how clever. Bookbinding card. See, I'm just going to go straight bookbinding. You're watching. You're watching me. I know it. That means like this, right? Hi, Deputy Heidi. Speed trap. Speed trap, indeed. She's got the, she's got the traps out. The radar. Is she going to remember them all? You've never done this before, Sarah? Well, what's a scene? Just thinking of what a scene would be. Your mate sometimes it just has a little a little landscape or sometimes it's fruit just fruit on a table is a scene. Yep. There's yeah. Fruit on a table could be a scene. Um anything that pretty much you would just see, I think. And if you say it's a scene. Yeah. And it's that old thing that we say if you think it's a scene and you tell us why, we'll say it's a scene. <laughs> Tell you no. We're just not hard to get along with at all. Maybe we should worry about that. She's ready. She's ready. Let's bring her back. Oh. oh, she's dark. Just a minute. Just kidding. She'll be here in just a second. I think. No. I got it. No, I, I'll get it. <laughs> yep, censored. We've never had to censor anybody yet. <laughs> oh. So, tell us about your plans. Okay, so my plan is, let me get, I have my little um, notes here for all you note takers. Hey. So, I am going to just blatantly steal your book binding idea because it's really cute and I've never done it before. <laughs> So it. I'll do a half inch binding at the top, but I'm very tricksy like a hobbit because <laughs> this is also going to form the house on my card. What? Yes. So this, this book binding is going to create the door for the house that I'm making for an animal. Ooh. So you are and very hobbity. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think this will work, but let's hope that my my book binding works first since I've never <laughs> done it before. Well that's the easy part. So it'll open up like this. So this is like a little um porthole into the house that my critter, my mysterious critter lives in. Now what's you nice are way about, in it. Yeah, I'm I'm deep. I'm deep in now. You are, you are. I like it. What's cool about this whole book binding thing, I'm fascinated and now do you go like in phases where you do use a certain medium or a certain technique over and over, you know, when you first learn it. Cause I feel like I might just make some book binding cards now. <laughs> I uh, refer to it as going on benders. <laughs> yes. So I might be on, I might be on a book bender. How about that? It's not um, a bad thing to be. Yeah. So we're going to see if this works first. I mean, I'm I know excited. it's going to work. It almost looks like, yeah, it is going to be a critter. Is it going to be like a mouse critter or? Oh, you'll see. I'll give you a oh, hint here in a squirrel. Second. It's a squirrel critter. No, it's actually, I'm going to go ahead and surprise Marianne, and it's not going to be a squirrel. Hmm. Um, but what's cool about the book binding thing that I noticed when I was um, figuring out where to put glue is that little score line tells you everything you need to know about where to put the glue, right? You can't mess that up. Yes, that's true. That's true. It's an easy, it's an easy fancy fold. Yeah, it is easy. 
Okay, so for this one, I'm going to need, now this, I'm going to give you a big clue here, Mary. So if you don't get this, okay. you might need some caffeine because it's going to be pretty obvious. <laughs> I almost think I do. Okay. <laughs> um, I need mm. my sticky mat for this operation because I'll be working in the center of my misty. So you always want to have your sticky mat so that you don't have to worry about getting it in the right place. If you're using a background stamp, which I will be using. Okay. Are you feeling just high suspense right now? <laughs> yes. Are you on the edge of your seat? I literally. <laughs> <laughs> One night okay. I knocked it over, so it could happen again. <laughs> Now, you do want to have your sticky mat in the corner, though, because I've made that mistake. Now, do you see where I'm going here? Oh, I think I'm getting an idea. That but you do want to like put swirl. you want to put your little die cut back in there, though. Because if you, oh, so if you do mean. that, like during your live and then you screw it all up, then it's, you're going to live in infamy. Mary so Ann says beehive. Oh, you're close, Marianne. You oh, are close. Just close? Travis Boone says beehive. <gasps> I've got... Happy have... anniversary, you, by the way, Travis and Sandy. Are you telling me I have stumped some people? I think you have. I think I have. I'm feeling kind of proud of myself right now. <laughs> oh, Gwen says... A chicken coop is that there we wire? go now uh, you're cooking. cluck cluck danny's dreams <laughs> cluck cluck <laughs> oh i feel like a dumb cluck i didn't i thought that was a, <laughs> a beehive for sure because you had mentioned beehive before we went to get our things and i thought oh she, she really i told did you like I, was, beehive. I told you i was tricksy like a hobbit <laughs> well that's gonna be that's going to be just fine. And you did like you did mention a, one of the cards that had chickens on it. You did say something about those. I do love some chickens. So <laughs> now this is your chance to give great homage to chickens everywhere. Yes, anybody who loves chickens and wants nothing more than to be a crazy chicken lady, I'm right there with you. <laughs> do you have any? I don't have any, but my city just now made it um, legal for us to have backyard chickens. So, okay, coming so soon. You, yeah, you're going for yeah. it. Yep. Now I'm actually going to leave my die cut in place while I do a little bit of ink blending, just because I don't want to mar the inside of my card. Gotcha. And I'm just going to ink blend with the same color. What are you doing over there? Do you have a little landscape? Working? I do. Just a little tiny landscape. Oh, it's so cute for your small scene. Yep, yep. Going to have a little neighborhood. Oh, well, that's adorable. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll know in a little while. <laughs> now I'm using my neutrals. Neutrals so are important. Yeah, I haven't haven't done any colors yet. I'm being very conservative, trying to you know conserve my three colors that right. I get here. Right, I know it's a little hard, but you get used to it. And it's a, a, um, it's actually kind it? of a funny thing how often you use just three colors and you don't realize it until you're told, "Hey, you can only use three colors," and you. Go, Right. This seems like then, nothing. Then you panic. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't seem right. But it, um, it's often that that's all you use. And you that is so it. true. Mm -hmm. When I'm when I'm gel printing, which is one of my favorite things to do, mm -hmm. I'm always talking about the Holy Trinity, which is the uh, cyan, yellow, and magenta. Right. Um. For your primaries and how very much you can do with just those three colors. Oh, and I yeah. think someone even said it in chat tonight that when we were talking about the colors, they said you can do a lot with red, yellow, and blue. And they are correct. Yep. Absolutely correct. 
like almost everything. Like, yeah, exactly. everything. <laughs> yeah, everything. <laughs> Danny's dream would like to know where you got that chicken wire. This is from Prickly Pear Stamps. And actually, I think everything I'm using tonight comes from Prickly Pear Stamps. They have the cutest stuff. Me and too. especially her, because actually the other stamp that I was thinking of tonight um, was this little bookshelf that has a cat on it. It's a mini slimline stamp that she has. And I was thinking that incorporates house because the cat is on a bookshelf in a house. Uh -huh. And I was thinking of doing this same thing. But then when I was flipping through my stamps, I saw the chicken wire and I was like, how can I possibly resist that? Gotta do the chicken wire. Time yeah. has come. You know, I have a great, um, that makes me think of a great digital stamp that I have of a cat on a bookcase. And it oh, may, nice. See, yeah. It may come to life sometime during, probably on Fun University. I'll pull those out because I've never shown them anywhere and i wondered where i was going to put them because i really like them <laughs> so yeah yeah oh I, I love your little houses those are so cute yeah now i'm just, just tracing this guys. just because i'm not good at lining stuff up so if any of you are the same way just trace your circle because you can just erase it afterwards yeah if you want to know exactly where to position your stamp I have not... some questions for you. Uh-oh. Oh, oh yeah, no. Is this because... unscripted? This is unscripted. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what is craft roulette. And I'm sorry I didn't I remind it. you. I that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I'm ready so for your chances are you'll prop Chances are you'll do better. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Our, no, these are from our patrons. They get to ask questions of our of our guests. Oh, how fun! Okay, but before I start, we also I think I remembered to ask you about our team purple, team orange political faction question to be ready to. Oh, you did tell me. Oh, I, yeah, okay, I'm good. ready for that. Yeah. Okay, so I think Mr. Producer, and I think she's this. Are you Team Purple or Team Orange? Do you tend to like one or the other more? You ready? I am. My, this might surprise you, but people who have watched my videos of my studio remodel know the answer to this. Oh, I, no, I am Team it. Orange. <gasps> what? Yes. Not for sure. Because I thought my you'd be studio purple. Is is turquoise and orange. Dad, gum it. The, the colors of the Southwest. I knew I was going to stump you. You did completely. Sorry. What else don't I know? What else are you going to surprise <laughs> me with? I'm nervous now. <laughs> well, that's that is nice. I didn't. I really did think purple. I I don't know. There was something about your coloring that I thought you would be good with purple. Eh, but I'm team orange, so. I love complimentary uh, color schemes. Right. And that was the other thing. I thought you had more bluish things going on. Like, understand yes. blue. Hello. Yes. And that the is blue not looks, orange. But it looks the best with orange because it's this contrast. Is this is true. Well, so. I won't argue your... I won't argue that. But I I'm thrown You're off. I'm, I think I'm just going to have to quit for the night. Do you want to go ahead and take over the show? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I really just, I don't know what to say. I'm, 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 I'm flummoxed. But I've well, been really like, cold on guessing these things lately. There's no quitting in baseball and there's no quitting in stamping. <laughs> no, I have but to we, use my heat gun for a second. So pardon me. No problem. Me. Not a problem. <laughs> So, okay, so your team, did you, were you surprised? Did you guys think she was Team Orange? If you don't know what Team Orange is and Team Purple, we do have an explanation on craftroulette.live. And even that may make some sense to you, may not, but it may help at least a little bit. 
Well, they're no very polarizing colors. I get yes. that they're controversial colors. Yes, they really are. I mean, people either love them or they hate them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what we found was um, I kept finding... Well, the wheel kept choosing orange. He's my buddy. And um, so I started getting complaints <laughs> about the wheel <laughs> just choosing orange way too much. And oh, um, so we found out that people that either you liked orange a lot or maybe not so much. And those yeah. that didn't like it so much tended, not necessarily, not a one-to-one -one kind of ratio, but tended to like purple better. And so that's how it all came about. That's and it's probably a fun thing. I would guess most crafters like purple more. <laughs> they they're they're are a, they are a loyal group. I will tell you yeah. unequivocally. <laughs> Yes, they are. My <laughs> friend Libby, that's her favorite color, and she mm -hmm. is very... Daniel is always um, He's... always trying to get in good with Libby by making purple cards. Right, he does you know, like purple. You... We've talked about yeah. it with him. Yeah. You know, you <laughs> know to you're it. trying to be the favorite, Daniel. I know you're listening. <laughs> I'm on to you. Gigs up. I'm on show, to you, brother. Show... No need to vest those cards anymore. They're out. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to add a little that's neutral. Nice. Trying to add neutrals wherever I can. Oh, that's like buying color. It's buying exactly. variety. Exactly. I think I'm going to do... I think my colors are going to be red... You know, chickens are easy. That's one of the reasons I went with the chicken versus the cat. Because it's easier to do a chicken with a limited color palette, I think. Okay. Than it is to do a cat, right? Because I can have a white chicken. <laughs> yeah. With just little, little accents. Well, our cat is black. With a tiny... Mine is too. Just a tiny little speck of white. Aww. And I, he often, if, you know, in a dark room or something, he looks like a black t-shirt. And so sometimes I'll come in and say, <laughs> Kerwin, is that you or is that a black t-shirt? <laughs> exactly. They are the night. I have a black kitty too. Black cats are magical. They're, he's a good guy. Except at 2.30 yeah. in the morning, I tell you, he wakes me up I and know. says, hey... I need I to go play. They have to get some words out at 2.30. That's, her sister is a tortie. And you want to talk about some words that need to be said. Torties <laughs> have to talk. Well, talking saved this guy. Got his guy at home because he was a stray. He was a street, a street cat. And he Aww. just screamed and screamed at my daughter. Actually, her neighbor. Until she picked him up and said, you know. I got a home for you. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. Yeah. And he was like seven weeks old. Aw. And we'd lost our other cat two weeks before. So it was, we were prime, can we were prime candidates for a new kitty. That's how I got my kitty to my previous kitty yeah. had died. And I was just moping around and my husband brought me these two little rescues. <laughs> And it Smart fixed man. everything. It does fix everything. Nothing like a new yeah. little friend. New little furry friend. Or feathered oh, yeah. friend for all my chicken ladies out there. I like chicken I like the birds too. Yeah. Yeah. I like the birds. I do too. I've been trying to train this blue jay um, in my yard. To do what? To come get peanuts out of my hand. But oh, okay. so far, he'll only come pick them up when I throw them now. But he loves peanuts even more than squirrels do. Oh, yeah. They're they're magically good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you'll probably get peanuts. it. He'll probably do it. That's what I'm thinking. That's what was one of my pandemic goals was to get a crow, get a trained crow <laughs> and a trained blue jay. I haven't got the crow yet. 
I got some trained squirrels, though. <laughs> we had we raised a blue jay. Oh yeah, from from a wee little guy. And you oh, know how blue jays have an attitude. Um. Yes, ma'am. I do. I am very he familiar. Never, he never lost it. <laughs> we had also yeah. tra we had also raised a robin before. Oh goodness! The well, they're a little. Would, the robin would come down, sit with us in the backyard, come over, sit on your shoulder, and be Aww. just the sweet, sweet little guy. The blue jay would sit up in the tree and just yell, "Feed me!" Yeah, but feed me. Very the one redeeming thing, because mockingbirds are state birds, and they're so mean, um, and they're they're <laughs> kind of they have that same personality like jays. But the one mm -hmm. thing the blue jays do is they always tell me when there's a snake in the yard. Oh my gosh! I, so Real. I'm grateful that's, for that. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Do they attack them? Attack no, but the, they'll all they'll just they'll all yelling. gather around and squawk. When there's a snake and I, there's like this one sound that they make that I know it's a snake uh -huh. so that I know I'm not going to, I am not going to get bit just walking into that part of my yard. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I appreciate and tolerate my blue jays for that reason. Oh yeah. Our blue jays name was Harold. Oh, Harold. <laughs> I, love it. I love it when pets have people names. <laughs> because he was found by a neighbor named Harold. Aww. Yeah. And then our um, her our Robin's name was Twerp because we said, hey, what's your name? And he said, Twerp. Twerp. Aww. <laughs> they seem like oh. sweet little birds. Super sweet birds. Really nice. I'm going to do some oh, more. With it. Had all the neighborhood kids getting worms and bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kept them so busy. <laughs> That's so cute. It was fun. So uh, back anyway, back to the questions. I haven't asked you a single one. And I think this first oh. one may have something to do with maybe a critter. Because Kathy Pisupati asks, <laughs> what is Kathy. the monthly but, yeah, what is the monthly budget for pecans for uh -oh, Clarence? Uh-oh, here we go. Here we go, Kathy. Uh -huh. That's very personal. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. Okay, well, let me just tell you that I have a Nuts.com account. <laughs> and I'm probably the most valued customer because I buy oh seven-pound bags of shelled pecans for Clarence and the other squirrels. Clarence is a girl. It's a long story. Okay. Um, and I probably do, I bet I do 14 pounds a month. And then the I supplement with peanuts, which are a lot less expensive, but then Marianne uh -huh. turned me on to these um, nutrition blocks for squirrels, which have like, because squirrels actually need a lot of calcium. I didn't know that. Um, so there's this keep guy that going. makes these little blocks that has like fruit and nuts and the calcium they need. It has milk in it and all kinds of stuff. So um, thank you, Marianne from the Rabbit Hole Designs for upping my squirrel nutrition game. <laughs> and then Clarence is very, very picky and will only eat pecans and the nice. other squirrels they eat avocados and strawberries and watermelons and my vegetable scraps like my tomato scraps I put those out and they will drag a whole piece of tomato that big up into a tree it's hilarious oh gosh. It's do so they funny. so do you get other critters in there wanting that same stuff too or no no, because I go out there, I feed them myself. So I don't like leave food out for the critters because we are in a very predator dense environment okay. here. Uh -huh. So I don't want to like endanger the squirrels or attract right. other things. Right. Um, but if there is like a pe one pecan or a piece of a pecan left on the porch, I will see on my camera that 
Mr. Foxy comes by and likes to snack on leftover pecans. So I have yeah. foxes, I have raccoons, I have possums, I have an armadillo. Marianne watches all my little, um, all my critters <laughs> on my cameras. I We have so much wildlife here. And we have coyotes and mm -hmm. deer and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. Goodness. I love your little houses. Well, your chicken's looking mighty fine. My chicken's about to get a little roost. Uh-oh. How am I going to do this? This is too uh -oh. big. What am I going to do? How's this going to work? Maybe yeah. I'll let it hang out of the misty a little bit. I wonder if that'll work and I can just smush on it. We'll see. We'll see if I'm about hmm. to have a huge disaster on my hands. Could you do it on something else and then add it? I and could, but I'm just going to live on the edge. Especially if you mess it up, then you can. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or it'll just be distressed. Look, it's fine. There you go. It's looking fine. Sometimes you got to stand up and do the um, stamp CPR. Yep. Yep. Just swoosh it. Apply That's one pressure. of the things that's really nice about photopolymer stamps. Mm hmm Is you can just smush them. <laughs> so do you miss the wood ones? Um, not as I get to come old, over. I was very reluctant to come Where over. I love, I love, love, love rubber stamps. Um, but you know, there are so many like techniques that you can do with clear stamps that you can't necessarily do with rubber stamps and clean rubber. You can still have all of that in the misty. Yeah. Um, I will say as I get older and like my hand strength, isn't what it used to be. The wood block itself is a little bit harder for me. Um, but I still love a cling rubber stamp. Most of my background stamps are cling rubber. Okay. So, I remember when um, Close My Heart moved over to the acrylics. Or oh, yeah. Photo polymer. I had a, a customer who loved wood stamps. She'd never used the clear ones. And uh -huh. I showed her the clear one. And then I hand, and she stamped with it. And then I handed her a wood one, and she looked at me. She turned her head around and said, what do you expect me to do with this now? <laughs> her conversion was instant. <laughs> yeah. Was just... Well, and then you add the misty into that mix, and it's like, whoo, mm -hmm. you never go back after you, yeah. like, because, you know, we used to throw away half of everything we made because it was stamped right. poorly. And think of our poor necks. I know. We used to always <laughs> get those taco necks. Thing or that you know like so exactly you didn't drip, your, drip the cheese out taco so, neck. That's taco so very neck. true ah, ah, ah. do I want to just leave those white I think so I think I need a little cinnamon what am I going to well, do about I have it. That? you did so well on that last question divulging your economic stand standing with <laughs> <laughs> with your how animals. How dare you? How dare you, Kathy? How dare you? She, she knew. Did, she <laughs> asked that right away, too. She didn't. <laughs> that was not like a late in the week kind of question. She had it right there. Yeah. Um, I, I hope that nuts.com never gets like hacked and they expose all of my pecan data to the world. That would be terrible. <laughs> That would Terrible. just be so, well. You don't have to worry. We all know now. <laughs> so, and you know, you could have a an army of little squirrels defending you. It's They'll true. I think your, that they're yeah. pretty loyal. Yeah. Yeah. If they, if you have people laughing at you, they can. You can just tell them, "Hey, listen here." I'll sick some pretty crazy squirrels. They're missing their pecans, and I'm going to sick them on you. So well, out. there are worse things than feeding little wild critters, right? I think so. I think so, too. I think so, I think you too. are safe in doing kind things for little critters. 
Yeah, I've always had a soft spot for animals. Oh, they're just so nice. How many times a day? I wonder. Some days I go, okay, I'm going to count how many times I say to the dog, you're such a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's already astronomical numbers by the time I get down to coffee. It's just like, oh, you're such or a good boy. how many times do you say, because um, I do this, I find myself doing this all the time. When they're talking, how many times do you say, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> when you really don't know you don't know what they're thinking but i say it all the time oh i know you're such a good boy and everything <laughs> everything that i say you agree with <laughs> yeah that's true that is one of the yeah. great things about having pets yeah they were wrong weren't they boomer oh yeah <laughs> they were so wrong <laughs> Uh, You'll stand by me no matter what, won't you, Boomer? Oh, yes, I'll stand by you no matter what. Can good I finding any three cards is small thing. Okay, I think I followed all the rules. Shockingly, really? that's I think you're... Ooh, not like you I do all. it. I know, but you got to on this. I know. It's just how it is. It's good for a. I got those not straight both times, so I'm going to go with it. Oh, that well, is Melissa. so cute. Oh, my gosh. That is so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Melissa Miller asks. Melissa. Yeah. Are you my friend? She was a zero hero this week. She had sent in her 30th card, and it was gorgeous. And she had a a splayed dua, dua dilium or something. She had something that was hurting in it. So she did it with great. Oh no! Duress. Yeah. So we're wow, really that, that was nice that of her. Name. But she asks, "You are such an amazing gel plate artist, and oh. I love watching your gel press Friday live streams." Yes. When and how did your love for gel plates begin? Good question. That is an excellent question. I actually started. I think I started gel printing again. My age is showing when <laughs> the first like home gel presses were available. So again, late 1900s when they first came out with those, That's but I had actually been part of um, women printmakers of Austin. <laughs> and so I had done different kinds of printing um, other than gel printing, so we had done like more traditional um, gel. Uh, I mean, not gel. We had done more traditional printmaking techniques, and uh, I. So that was like my entrance to printing. It's a great organization, and if y'all like printmaking at all, I bet you have a printmaking organization near you that you could take classes from. So that was sort of my start. And then when the very first gel plates started to kind of come into the market, I bought one of those and I experimented on my own and I was not very good at all. <laughs> Back then we yeah. were we were reading Stampington magazines like that's where we got our instruction from because YouTube wasn't really a thing. Um, and I learned a little bit there, but then I took a class at our local wildflower center with a woman named Linda Germain. And I encourage you to look her up on YouTube because she's a phenomenal gel printing teacher. Mm. And that's when I felt like I really started to be able to do it on my own and be happy with what I did. So, but really it's, it's like watercolor or anything else. The key is the amount of time that you put in, mm -hmm. the more you will get out of it. So it's really practiced by yourself. It's not so much taking classes. It's not so much watching videos. It's actually putting your hands on those supplies and doing it over and over again to build skill kind of all by yourself in your studio. So mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. recommend that enough. Yeah. That's a pretty big answer there, Melissa. I think that's a good answer. That's a great question. Yeah, we have good, we get good questions, which is good because I don't necessarily have good questions. I ask things like, they're really kind of silly things. So it's nice when we have somebody that thinks and asks a question. It's different. Yeah, that is a very thoughtful, good question. 
And, and then, I encourage y'all to try oh, it. Don't ahead. be intimidated. No. Just try gel printing. Yes. My first, uh, the, one of the very few things I've ever sold was a print. It was a wood oh, print. really? Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, you know what's it's fun about print. that? It's never the same twice. You can't reproduce it if you try. And that's one of the things, I know that's one of the things that scares people. But it's also one of the things that makes it really fun because no one else's is ever going to look like yours. Not yeah. even your second one. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. no, it's just a... Oh, Sharon from Prickly Pear is here. Sharon, what are you thinking? You thinking your product is looking pretty good tonight, huh? Sharon. Nice to have you. Welcome. Look at that. You You're just... being well represented. Are you just chicken in, Sharon? Chicken in. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> yes, I did. Chicken in, you funny girl. Okay, so I I'm looked at Carl Sandberg because oh, of your yeah. reference on, on uh, Understand Blue. And I didn't yes, get to sure. the rutabaga story thing, but I did listen to him talk about his books on Lincoln. And yes. he had such an interesting way to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. It was great. I enjoyed it. Yeah, there's so much Illinois history to be learned with um, Carl Sandburg, among other things. My dad grew up in Chicago, like I told you, so he loved Carl Sandburg. My dad, you know, Lake Michigan is so big. My dad thought he grew up on an ocean. <laughs> it and looks like it. Yeah, and Carl Sandburg, you know, wrote about that quite a bit, and it was just sort of a romantic topic. But the rutabaga stories were were always my favorite stories that he read to me. I, so I whimsical. Will I will look those up because I don't know how I missed them, but I did. Yeah, it's great, and and some of it, it's you know, there's like a really whimsical so sort of like the Jabberwocky sections mm -hmm. of the Alice in Wonderland. There's like that element to him sort of making up words and stuff in uh -huh. some of those stories. And it's really fun. Oh, that's Look at your my fun kind of, little. That's kind um, of like my kind of thing. Yeah. Making yeah, up words. Sure. We make them up all the time around here. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> extra fancy putting that um, paper on the inside. You're fancy. Oh, let me tell you. I'm just trying to impress you. <laughs> You're Are you doing done? A good job. I think I'm done. I think I'm done too. Then look at that. I think I might add some uh, liquid or some glossy accents or something for the windows. But I for can do windows. that too. And a couple yeah. little, couple little gems or some nouveau drops for handles and things like that. But basically, that's that is it. so freaking cute. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I think yours is for, and look at this, Lydia. It's just like you said, you wouldn't be able to tell the parameters if you no. looked at these two cards. No, you absolutely could not. There's no <laughs> way. They're so different. They are so I love different. that. And you tell taught me, me something very fun tonight with the book binding. Oh, they are good. You'll enjoy that because you can do all sorts of stuff with it. It just fancies it up just a tiny bit can change um a, it can change the front from a a2 to a square you know For just sure. all sorts of things you can just and you can ha you have the two parts to play with then and um you can you can do some kind of a and b kind of things that are fun but you know what's weird what's kind of serendipitous is the so, way that the book binding the small scene and the house thing work together like just randomly right Right. Oh, that Mr. Wheel, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, there's a little he magic does. in there, I think. I think somebody's he's... sprinkling a little fairy dust. <laughs> it's glitter. <laughs> it's just glitter mixed with a little embossing powder. <laughs> I love it. Well, yours Tell is us adorable. one more time. Tell us one more time about your cute little chicken coop that, that made us all think it was going to be a beehive. Please. <laughs> well, this is a chicken wire, but see, I see where you're, where you all were going with the beehive, mm -hmm. but it's actually a chicken wire background stamp. Mm -hmm. So I thought that this is the outside of the chicken coop, like you, <laughs> where you would have the chicken wire and then you open it up and she has a nice little roost on, and she this really is does. just a wood grain, 
um, background. But of course, you got to have a window for the chicken to look out of in the chicken coop. I mean, they're not prisoners, Mary. They're no, we hope not. We hope not. One of my favorite kids' books is called Along Came a Dog. And it's about a chicken who <laughs> whose feet get frozen off. But it's a great story. Oh, if you can, and it's one of those old books, too. And so it's probably worth $100. But um, it's right. a great book if you can find it. It's not in print anymore, but it's wonderful. Well, you know and how this little old chicken children. reminds me because he doesn't have any feet. <laughs> he doesn't have any feet. He's just taking a nap in there in his chicken coop. Do you have names check picked out for your soon to be chickens in your yard? Oh gosh, no, I don't have that. Just come to me like like Clarence mm-hmm. did. Like I just looked at Clarence <laughs> and I knew his name was gonna have to be Clarence, even though he was I found out later he was girl. We had a pig name a is. guinea pig named Harry that <laughs> and we had to change the Y to an I. But it, it didn't matter to Harry. <laughs> he just wanted no. his See? vegetables. See, Clarence doesn't care. Mm-mm. No, no, not at all. Well, mine is also a bookbinding fold and um, just with some handmade <laughs> car- handmade houses. And oh, I okay. use three colors, orange, red, green, and then my new- craft roulette neutrals. We don't even have any blue in the sky, which I, when I was grabbing the colors, I went, oh, I'm not going to have any blue. Well, we'll huh? just have a white sky with a little bit of green. And that turned out exactly. just fine. Um, gray background, one of my favorite go-tos. And uh, then inside, just uh, you make everything better in a little so bit of paper. That's so cute. So, yeah. And I don't even know what how big this is. But it is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Yeah, it looks, it's an artist yeah, card. I square one. <laughs> Well, you did really well. You were not vexed or bamboozled by the uh, wheel at all. No, I actually feel like, you know, I had those competing desires to do the cat on the bookcase and yes. the chicken. Um, so I I was very inspired by the wheel. Well, I have one more question that will be inspiring, too, from Grandma Gay, the thoughtful question of the day. We don't ever want to miss a Grandma Gay question. They're fabulous. I love Grandma Are you Gay. ready? I know. Mystery solving, treasure hunting, and paper crafting art. How are they related in your experience? <gasps> Mystery oh solving, treasure hunting, to... and the paper crafting art. I need to send her a prize because that is like, those are all <laughs> of my competing passions. I love them all so very much. <laughs> and I think that... I am the daughter of a scientist, and so I was taught critical thinking in it. We did puzzles together, and I love logic puzzles, and I love Uh mysteries, and I love true crime and all of that. And I think at the end of the day, what crafters really love to do is solve problems. So I think even like the people that work in our industry that create tools, they Mm -hmm. love to solve problems. We're like, how can I take this? crafty process and make it easier? How can I make it prettier? How can I, you know, you have all these questions that you're constantly answering when you craft. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same with all of that puzzle solving and mystery solving. We're naturally curious people, but Mm -hmm. we also like to win. And so we (laughs) like to have those solutions. And I think that is a very deep thought tonight, Grandma Gay. Very she's, deep thought. She's got it. She is. This is a thoughtful question of the day from Grandma Gay. I it know. is. That's one. I'm going to write a book using her questions because yeah, she sends one that. in almost every week. So I'll have at least 52. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would love to hear your thoughts on that, actually. So if, y- if y'all want to comment on what you think the answer to that question is, I sure would love to hear it. Yeah. We can put it over on the Facebook group. Yeah. Because that yeah. that's a fantastic question. It probably has a lot of different answers, if I had to guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, envelopes for this size, it fits into a um, same card, an A2 size card envelope. It just has a little extra elbow room. But it fits yeah, into an that. invitation size or an A2 size yeah. envelope. Mm-hmm. I don't think your card has to be exactly the size of the envelope anyway so you can have a little wiggle room in there you can also yeah you can um yeah why not you you could stick this on a bigger card too and then it would be something else altogether but you could that's true you could have like a backer Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All sorts of good stuff. You can do all sorts of stuff. There is there's a mystery in that, I'm sure, to solve. And it will be a treasure to find the answer. And uh, (laughs) and it will all be involved with paper crafting. So, all right. Well, we're going to let you have a moment here just to relax. We're going to bring you back on here in just a few minutes. But we got to tell everybody else how to play, who's coming up, and give some stuff away. All right? Sounds good. Well done. I enjoyed our evening. We'll be right back with you. Don't run off. All right. You're going to want to play this week. Holy moly. Do some sort of bookbinding card. If you're not sure what all these things are, go back to the part of the show where we're talking about it, and it'll make more sense. A bookbinding card, any three colors plus craft roulette neutrals. Houses, small scene, complete your project, send it uh, in, upload it on craftroulette.live. There is a form. You just have to do that. Do that by Sunday night at midnight, and it will be on Monday's blog and next week's show. Also, if you're busy this weekend and you don't think you can do that in twenty in 48 hours, but you really want to, consider being a patron because you can have an extended submission form until Thursday night at midnight just for $5 a month. Buy in time. We have some great, great guests coming up. Next week we have Shanna from Trinity Stamps. Looking forward. She's been a little under the weather. Hope you're feeling better if you're watching the show. And we will um, get to know her next week. I think she's going to be fun, too. Then we have Marianne, who's been with us in the rabbit hole design um, on at the end of the month. And she will be our spin sponsor in August. I'll give you a little sneak, a little early edition info, insider information there. Christine Bertram will be joining us in August, as will Cassie Trask and Danny Bindell. Looking forward so much to spending the evening with each and every one of you, and you guys, too. We do want to thank our patrons. We do have a lot of fun on our blog. Um, it's a, if you don't know what a Patreon blog is, it is an actual blog. And we have comments and polls and videos and, and still pictures and measurements. Um, you can go over to patreon.com slash marygunfun and all of it's down in the description. And just give it kind of look over what each level offers and things like that. Maybe it's for you, maybe it's not. If it's not, but you like the show, please give us a thumbs up, give us a subscription, and share it with your friends. It would be a ton, a ton of help for us, and we appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Look at you. Keep coming. You just keep coming. You just keep coming. It's good stuff. Thank you, get Crafty all back. I forgot to ask her. Is that? Oh, wait, 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 wait. You know what that confetti means is? Does, oohs, ease, ah. If you have been around this show for a while, it means it's giveaway time. Our giveaways are based on the people that sent in cards last week. Then that goes clear up to Thursday night. And um, their name is on that board if you sent in a card. That's as easy as as hard, as easy as whichever it is to get on the board celebrated when you have an achievement get some prizes stuff it's all good stuff are we ready oh, grandma gay saying spin so we better spin mr producer let's give away a goodie bag first snura 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 isn't that how it is i'm still working on my swedish spin oh i thought it was gonna be sue Creamer for a second. And Schmidt. And Schmidt, you have till midnight on Sunday to contact me using the contact form on craftroulette.live. Tell me you want a goodie bag because we've got some goodie, good, good, goodie bags and I would love to send you one. But you got to let me know what your address is and that you want it. All right, next we have a goodie bag from Jeannie Lou. Spin! Spin that wheel, spin that wheel. I don't, we should, don't have a spin that wheel song. Spin that wheel, spin that wheel. Oh, that's right, there is a song going on. Agnes Hearn, oh, that's so nice. Agnes is a glitter fairy extraordinaire in the Facebook group. She leaves wonderful, meaningful comments, and um, I, I'm so glad that she got a little something. 
let me know on the contact form that you are interested in the Jeannie Lou goodie bag. She's, I think she packs them. So, snoodle, snoodle, snoodle. And a handmade card with an itty bitty gift from me. Yeah, I know. Everybody's wanting this one. This will go anywhere in the world, too. I know, I'm so happy for her, right, Grandma Gay? Is it going to be? Is it going to be? Teresa? It is Teresa Farrington. Well done. Just let me know that you want that handmade card with that itty bitty gift because I got some for you, darling. That's on the Craft Roulette Live form. There is a contact form. Please fill it out before midnight on Sunday. <gasps> now for the biggies. How about Trinity Stamp $25 gift certificate? for our spin-sponsored Trinity Stamps. I'm waiting for an order. <laughs> I'm waiting. I got one coming with some dust bunnies. <laughs> you were close, Kimberly. I'm sorry. Oh, Mary Youngblood, maybe next time. This is all programmed to be quite random, so I know it's... Oh, Amanda Stevens! Well, she's a good, she's a product person. <laughs> she sends in cards. Did you see her dancing corn card? <laughs> you gotta make sure you see the one where she's moving it. I've never seen such happy corn in my life. And cherry on top. Congratulations, Amanda. Cherry on top goes to... I don't think she'll have any trouble. You love the dancing corn? It was epic. The Epic Dancing Corn card. You finished your card? Awesome. Vicky Tillett! Vicky's been a... Oh, she'll be excited. She's been a viewer and contributor for many, many months and years, even, from North Carolina. I, make sure you let me know, though, so I can get this information to the companies and they can send you some goodies. Um, that was fun. I like giving away other people's stuff. It's great fun. Thank you guys. Thank you, Trinity, and thank you, A Cherry on Top. It has just been so much fun giving away your stuff. It really is. <laughs> All right. Bravo. Let's bring her back on, Mr. Producer. And there she is, smiling and relaxed and having a good night. Well, what did you think? Harder, easier? You know, I, I didn't know what to expect. Looking at that huge list of parameters, I would say it was much easier. If anything, I had too many ideas, not not right. enough ideas. Right. I would do that again anytime. That was a hoot. You know, what happens though, I, and I will warn you, oftentimes this will happen. You get those four parameters, they don't stop. They're never satisfied right. with one card. <laughs> right. Okay. And I saw I in the comments, people were live crafting along with us. That is yes. next level. Yes, there's something else. We're getting a message from Amanda that she would like us to spin again. So we're going to go oh. ahead and go back and do that. Thank you, Amanda. I thought you might She's do that. So um, let's go ahead. Mr. Producer's getting this all figured out. You're classy, girl. You're a classy Amanda. I think I'd go, oh, no, I want it. I want it. <laughs> okay, four Trinity stamps. Here we go. Thank you. She's classy, isn't she? She's like an Audrey Hepburn of crafters. <laughs> oh, we missed it. Oh, Sire will love it. He, um, just a second. He was here tonight. Are you still here? He, um, loves crafting and he does process videos for Craft Roulette on his very, very own. And he has a really good one this week, so make sure you look at it from episode 120. Congratulations! Oh, thank you again, Audrey Hepburn, Amanda Stevens. And, um... We're going to finish this night out. You know how we do at the end of the show? Do you know what we do? Well, I won't put you on the spot. We kiss our brains. 
<laughs> I already put you on the spot. I didn't tell you about that. But we um, kiss our brains. I learned it from a first grade teacher, and I thought it was the cutest darn thing. And so it's like, hey, we finished out the week. We're, we're chilling. We're relaxing. We spent the evening with some really nice people. And now we can start crafting. So, mm-hmm. Here comes the big brain kiss. There you go. That here, look who's here. Oh, hi, buddy. Here's hi, our little buddy. man. You haven't been on camera for a Aww. while, have you? He's like, oh my gosh, Those I have. Are... I always say that my cat has attention deficit disorder, meaning <laughs> I have not paid enough attention to the cat. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I do pay attention to him because he sleeps in here a lot. And I Aww. say, oh, Kerr, when I, and I say, don't wake me up at 2.30 in the morning. He goes, you wake right. me up Stop in the that. middle of the day all the time. <laughs> okay, that's And I don't point. fuss. I just curl point. up and purr. <laughs> so that's what you expect, right? A little curl up and purr. Sweet little kitty. Look at that. You can't even see him. Doesn't he look like a black t-shirt? So beautiful. With ears. With triangles. Yeah. Ouch! He has claws. <laughs> All right. Well, Lydia, thank you so much. I totally enjoyed my evening with you. I do not feel like we're done. And uh, so we'll have to figure out how to have you play again someday. Oh, I would love to. This was a blast. I think you slayed it. Thank you, Daniel, for the suggestion. He rocks. Chatterboxes. <laughs> Love you all. Take care. Be Have a good weekend. Send in those cards. There's Daniel right there. Mr. Producer, couldn't do it without you, literally. And Lydia, thank you. Thank we you. We will talk to you soon. Okay. Good night, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>